Previously it was called React Query, now it is renamed to Tanstack Query. And as you can see, this is a tool that is used in pure TypeScript and JavaScript applications, as well as React and other frameworks like Solid, Vue and Angular. Now we are going to install this Tanstack Query and use it to make the requests properly and also add caching out of the box. So if you go to the installation tab, you can find the dependency name that we need to install, which is npm install tanstack at react query. Let's go back to our application and stop the process of running it. And let's install the tanstack query. As always, after installing, you can check the package that it is installed and also the version. And next, we need to set this up. And if you go to the quick start section, you can see that all we have to do is to import the query client from here in React Query. And then we need to wrap the page. In our case, this will be the products page within this query client provider. This thing is called a context provider in React, which means that it makes query client available to all the components that are wrapped within this. Let's go to our app.jsx where we will need to set up the React Query. First, I will import the query client and query client provider from the package that we installed, which is tanstack slash react query. Next, before initializing our application, let's define a constant, which will be the query client. And this will be equal to a new instance of query client, which is an object provided by tanstack. And with this, we can use it in our products by wrapping the products within the provider, which is this provider. So let's scroll down here and before the products, I will open a query client provider and this provider will accept one property, which is similar to the props that we used in all of our components. This is called client in this case, and this will be equal to query client, which we defined here. So then we can close this and we will move the products inside of this client provider, which means that now this client will be available in the products. And after this setup, we can use the Tanstack query here instead of using our own custom logic. The fetch products will remain the same as we are going to still need to use Axios to make the request. But here, instead of using the use hook, we are going to use Tanstack query. So let's define the response which will be coming from the Tanstack. And there we have a specific hook which is called use query. And as you can see, this is coming from React query if you hit enter it will be imported automatically. And here we need to provide the configuration object. And we need to provide two properties here. The first one is query key. This should be a unique key to identify this query. And you can name this to be anything that you need inside of an array. The only rule is that it needs to be unique across your app. So I will name this as products query key. And the second part is the query function, which is defined like this query fn. And in our case, we have to provide the query function, which is the fetch products that we have defined at the top. And with that, first let's check what we are getting back in the response by doing console log response and then providing response in front of it. And let's comment out the product grid to not get errors for now. And I will need to restart our server by doing npm run dev. Now if we go back to our application and refresh it, you can see that the request has been made, which is the same products request, which returns us the products. And if we check the console log, you can see the response that we are getting back. As you can see, it contains a lot of stuff here. We are interested in three parts in this response. The first part is the data. If we expand this, you can see that this is the data that we are getting back from the API. Next, if you remember, we also need to control the loading state and for that we will need to use the is loading, which is either false or true based on the state. And this is coming automatically from this package without us having to handle this loading state. And the third part is the errors that we will need. So it will be either null in case we don't have any errors or it will be an object in case we have errors. So whenever we have an error, we need to display this on the screen or display some message for the user. That means that we can now destructure these properties from this response. The first part is the data. The second part was called error. And if you remember, the third part was called is loading. And as you can see, also the VS code is helping us with this. So the data is what we will need to pass to the product grid. So we can comment this back and instead of passing products, we will pass the data and let's get rid of this console log and save it. 
Now we can see our products are back available and we are getting the data but now with the react query. Let's also handle the loading and error states. First let's handle the loading state so whenever is loading is true which means that the request hasn't been finished yet. We'll need to return a different response here so we will return a diff saying that loading products and whenever the loading is complete meaning we got back the response in this case we will have either successful or error response. Successful response is handled here in this main return block but before that we also need to handle the error case so whenever error isn't null we need to display a different message and here we will return. For now we can return a generic message saying error when fetching the products. And as you can see we also don't need this products promise and we don't need the use hook from react. We actually also don't need the suspense from react because the loading state will be handled here. So we can get rid of this wrapper suspense and save this. Let's verify that both states work. For example if you refresh you can see the loading products for a split second. We are going to make this look better in the later sections but for now we have this loading state. And let's also simulate an error response. For example, if you provide a wrong URL like p products and save this and we refresh. On the right side, you can see that the request has failed. We got 404 response, which is not a successful response. We get this alert because this is coming from the fetch products function. We can actually remove this. But if you click on OK, you can see the error message that we are displaying for the user. So to summarize why are we using tenstack query instead of writing this logic ourselves. First of all it comes with automatic caching. You don't need to store API data manually. For example if you previously made this products request and in one other screen you also need this. It will be cached automatically and your app will work faster. The alternative of this would be to implement all of that logic yourself. But that would take a lot of time from us. And we probably won't make it as good as the Tanstack team because there is a whole team working to maintain this package and library. It also comes with the functionality of background refetching whenever you need to fetch something and it can be done in the background. It does that automatically. And as you saw it also provides us with the loading and error states automatically which we can populate on our UI.